All right, guys, what is up? It is Jared from Van City Conversions. Today, we're going to be taking you on a tour of this Transit Van 148 Extended. It is one of our, well, my, maybe Maddie's, hope it's Maddie's, favorite builds so far, and we're super excited to show you. We're filming inside the shop today. I would do it outside, but it is mid-January, and it is freezing. Before we hop into this tour, I just want to quickly say, if you haven't, if you're new around here, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment, obviously, after the video. If you have any questions, Hey, how did you do that? Why'd you do that? We are happy to answer, leave them down below. Last thing before we jump into it, three things here at Van City we really take pride in and really try to strive towards is a truly custom build, which means kind of tending to the client's wants and needs as much as we can. Craftsmanship when it comes to specifically cabinetry, woodworking, and probably the most important in my opinion is attention to detail, and we'll try to show you some of those key features. <laughs> vehicle, like I said, is a 148 Extended Transit. It's a 2022. Before we get into the outside, sorry if you see Finn wandering around. He's, he's totally lost right now. Up on the roof to start is the Stoked Adventure Outfitters. Full custom aluminum welded rack with the 50 inch light bar that goes across. On the roof, there's 400 watts of solar, a max air fan, plenty of deck space, aluminum welded deck space. And on the side here, we have the Fiamma F45S awning. On the side here in the van, you see we have the stoked, yet again with stoked adventure outfitters, they're nerf bars. Coming around to the side here, they decided to go with the flare space flares. These are paint matched with the uh, bunk style windows here. They have the shore power, the Furion 30 amp shore power. These are nice, they have a little light that lets you know when you're charging, which I think is cool. And on the side of the rig here, we have the stoked adventure outfitters ladder as well um, to easily climb up and access the top of your roof, excuse me, my fin. Access the top of your roof, and we'll show you all these, all these clips throughout the video. All right, let's hop into the van. Before I open this door, this van's a bit different. We actually went with an AMA style window. Um, everyone prefers, there's two options really, the AMA sliding style or the CRL Lawrence awning style. Clients like this one, I'm actually super happy with how it turned out. All right, when you step inside the van here, as you can see, they have obviously the flip up countertop here. Something's a bit special about this one. You can flip it up so it is flush with counter height. It does take a bit of bending over, but you can put it down quite a bit and then use it for a table height, which I think is pretty cool. You don't just have to have the option of one or the other. You can have both. All right, starting at the front section of the van, some of the key features in this transit that are aftermarket are the swivel seats. So we decided to go with, I think the best of the best, uh, the Scopima swivels, uh, both seats here, which just really does open up the space. Taking you to this corner here as well, another flip up table as kind of a secondary workstation. You have some USB outlets here, and it's just great use of space. You each have a his and hers table, and that one also acts as counter space, which is nice. All right, as soon as you walk into the van, this is actually a different location. What we've normally done, you have the fridge here, some counter space. Touching on their countertops, they went with pretty much a light butcher block. They wanted it as light as possible to almost match the pine ceiling and all the, the features there. This fridge we decided to go with, we've used it probably in our last five builds at this point. C85 Vitro Free Grow, amazing fridge. You have the mini freezer in there, plenty of storage, and they're one of the most efficient fridges on the market. Um, and I think that's pretty important when it comes to when it comes to fridges, they're nice, they're set in, they go well with their cabinetry. I've never had a problem with these, super happy with them. I wanna quickly mention this because I always seem to forget and just list off some of the raw materials we use in this build. The countertops are butcher block, same thing, sanded just with a lacquer, we didn't wanna change the colors of it. All the cabinetry in this build is a, it's a polymer MDF, so the finishing on it, it's a polymer by a company Sublime Collection, it's a silk touch. It's way more ro robust than a regular melamine on the outside, um, obviously with the corresponding edge banding. That was super easy to work with. All, all the walls are pre-finished uh, white shiplap, and the floors are a vinyl clicked together floating floor. Some of the easiest to work with, semi-easy to replace if it has to be replaced, and the only reason we use this for this specific material, you can use 
underfloor heating, the 12 volt underfloor heating layment we have, which is nice. And that's one of the first features I guess I'll mention. This fan does have heated floors. One more thing too, people ask this, the ends of all the cabinetry is a 5 8 UV good two-sided pre-finished maple ply. There you go. All right, we'll start on this side of the van. One of my favorite features and probably the first time doing this uh, in a van build and we're lucky to be able to do it, probably gonna do it on our own, is the propane, the three burner propane cooktop and oven combo. So I believe this is from Furion as well. It has the glass nice cover. Um, so you can still technically use it for some counter space. You're not putting it right on the stove. You have the three burner here. You have the stove space down in there. And some nice features, it has a light inside of the stove, which is a 12 volt um, power source, which is nice. Everything else is ran off propane. And you have the simple burners, light action, and you can custom adjust it. Three burners, same with the oven, you can light it in there, which is pretty cool. Under the cooktop is their five gallon refillable propane tank and also their 20 liter gray water tank. Although the sink is here, the gray water tank actually fits on this side. Just make it easy, you have your propane if you're out of that and you have your gray water to empty and that closes there. You have countertop, but this is obviously removable. It can be used as a cutting board, extra counter space, and then you have your nice deep sink in there. Um, a couple cool features to keep in mind just from experience. The sink has a nice little strainer. Guys are probably like, why is he showing you that? But trust me, you'll thank me later. Your gray water tank doesn't get gross. Underneath here is just plenty of storage. You don't have your water tank. It actually drains to the side here, which is nice. So you have plenty and plenty of storage under there. I should mention all the latches on these are slam latches. We have tried so many options in the past. RV Labs latches, um, a bunch of other latches. Nothing wrong with them. We just find these are the best for keeping things closed. If you're rocking the van, going off-roading, down a potholy road, these are not going to open. Some other latches in the past, if you over overfill the drawers, they do open. All right, you have the cabinetry, the overhead cabinets, front to back. Obviously, these two are plenty of storage for clothes. This is mainly where you put all your clothes. Same at the back, slamming latches. And then in here, you do have storage space. But our, per our client's request, they did want all the ugly <laughs> controls hid behind here. And I'll quickly go over what all these do and what they have. They have the Victron multi-control up here which controls all their 110 electrical. So that comes to pretty much all their outlets and their hot water heater. Next, you have a typical timer you'd find in the house. We use this for their hot water tank, so you can't forget to leave it on. When you want hot water, you set it for the amount of time you want it. When you're done with it, it shuts it off automatically. You have the upgraded LED remote for the planner gas heater. Um, a lot of cool settings and functions you can do in this. Beside, you have pretty much the brains of the vans. When you're not using the app on your phone, you have the Victron battery monitor, uh, the BMV 712. Beside it, you have the KUS water gauge. Shows you how much water you have in the van, three quarter tank right now. And then you have all of their switches. One is for the five pot lights. The other switch is for the under cabinet lights, which is actually set in. It's not just stuck on. So there's a track, three quarter inch track in there with a nice lens and set in. We keep that in mind when building this cabinet. Front to back on this side of the van, you have their, so you have those lights, you have the water pump, you have the gray water dump system for the shower, and then you have the shower light, I believe, and heated floors. All right, they have plenty of storage here. So they have a bunch of pull-out drawers. Obviously, Maddie will get you better shots of these. A really big deep drawer here as they pull out full length. And then all along the bottom here, you'll see a hollow. This is actually vent for the gas heater. So unlike sprinters where the heater goes under the seat, we decide to put the heater kind of more central of the van. It actually gets vented out here and into the garage, which helps with uh, winterizing the van, which is nice. All right, moving on to the shower. They have the Nautilus shower door, a bit different. They decide to go with the striped version with their new black housing, which I love. It matches everything in this van. You open it up, it is the self squeegeeing, and then you're open up to your, I guess your wet, your wet bath, your bathroom shower. Um, so we decided to go with the textured FRP shower walls in this with the black fixtures. This is a pretty cool shower head. It has a button, so even though the water's on, you can start and stop it. You want to lather up soap, spray, you preserve water. That is key in, in a van conversion and van life. You have the removable shower rod here. When you don't 
And when you want to shower, you can remove it, throw it in the overhead shelf. And when you're not showering, this can be used to hang your bathing suits, your wetsuits, all that fun stuff. The good old nature's head. Um, it's one of the only toilets that I think I can still count on. It's one of the only toilets that still actually arrive when you order it. It's a funny inside joke. Um, so that's pretty basic. You have the nature's head there. And then we have for this a fully custom made stainless steel shower pan, as you can see, um, because some of the, I guess, basic pans you buy, the drain holes with this transit and the body and all the framing underneath was a nightmare. Pay a bit extra, but I think the stain look, looks way better. It's going to last 10 times as long. Um, so we want the stainless shower pan. I believe it's 24 by about 40. You guys are probably like, wow, this layout's starting to look familiar, but I'm telling you, it's like the best layout in our opinion and from our client's feedback, that works. So go into this section between the shower and the bed, you have a full pantry and a closet. So you open this up and you have a full size closet in here. You do have yet again, another removable rod. Um, so if you want to hang stuff vertically, you can do that. And then you also, which aren't in yet, that's the last thing we have to make. So you have to see how many they want, what they want. You have the adjustable shelves in here. You don't want the shelves, you just have plenty of storage, but you do have options for the adjustable shelves. And then inside, which is pretty cool for accessibility, and if you ever need to make some repairs when it comes to winterizing and stuff, we do have a little access panel in here we can remove. And then you can see all the plumbing in behind here if you have any leaks. Um, you shouldn't but it's good to have just in case you don't want to enclose that in and god forbid something happens with your water and you can't shut it off and then over here you have the full size pantry so for all your spices your dry goods i think these are some of the best use of space all right i'm going to sit up on the bed for this but you have a big deep yet again pull out drawer tons of storage in this van i can't emphasize that enough this is mainly i think they're fitting I think it's an air fryer or their crock pot in here with a bunch of other pots and pans, slam latches. And then down below, it's not much storage, but we didn't want to waste it. Um, because the wheel well where it's located, we use the over the wheel well water tank. The water tank actually goes under here, but you do have a bit of storage left in here, which we have opened. Maddie will show you that. There's plenty of storage still down there. Um, use every square inch of the van for storage. And finally, normally we have um, some drawers here, but they decided to go with a full access to the garage. This is pretty cool for many reasons when I show you the garage and what we've done to it. Um, so yeah, that's full access. If you've got to reach back there, grab some of your dirty laundry and whatnot. I think that's pretty cool. Moving on to the bed, I'll hop in the back doors and matter will film so I can show you everything. But some of the key features are, this is a ratcheting bed I guess lifting up on both sides and angles so you can either sit here um, and just relax inside the van or vice versa you can flip it up and look outside the van if you're parked up at a nice view and I'll show you how that works. You lift it up and it locks into place. It's not a huge angle but by the time they get their mattress in here you can't go super high but it is an angle. If you want to put it back down same thing it goes back into place and that's on both sides. All right at the back I guess this is the bedroom of the van. You have, like I said, the flares on each side. Now this bed is typically, or it is way higher than most beds because you'll see once you get to the garage. Uh, but you have the flares on each side, the his and her reading light, both with USBs. These are nice. Um, always a place to plug your phone and some lights if you wanna shut everything off. Right above the bed, they have the Max Air Fan Deluxe with the remote, that's overhead helps air ventilate in and out. And then you have the bunk style windows here to open to help with ventilation. We just went with a fabric and some 3M. Oh, Maddie's dropping the camera. Touching on the mattress it is being made as we speak, but it is a custom made size. Um, there's gonna be two little cutouts for inside the flares and then a full size mattress for it to be able to hinge up and not touch inside of the flares. Bed platform, some nice ventilation here, routed out holes for breathability. I want to have mold under your mattress. And yeah, it's a pretty cool system. All right, welcome to the garage space. It is definitely the biggest garage we've ever done in any van. They could fit four full-size bikes in here, two gravel bikes, a downhill enduro, and a fat tire bike. Um, thanks to this pull-out drawer slide and the Rocky Mounts system, the track system. It's been amazing. They all fit, it works, clients are happy. We added in a light in the garage, so, when you're rummaging through here at night for your firewood and whatnot, you can see. And we also added, they wanted an old fashioned 12 volt cigarette lighter um, for their blow up pumps to 
blow up their inflatable paddle boards and all that fun stuff. In the back there, as you can see, there's some custom made ventilation. When you turn on the heater, it actually blows into the garage as well, which does help heat up uh, the water system and the electrical, which is super nice. Coming on to the plumbing side, didn't waste space, a lot of usable space here, and then it is set a bit back in, but you have the outdoor shower, pretty standard, and your water fill, which is nice. And you do have room on each side to fit your spare tires they have to remove for the bikes, and plenty of room. So just to give you an idea, again, from the outside, Matt will show you. This is a full pull-out drawer. We lined it in a nice coin flooring, so obviously your bikes are gonna be wet and muddy. And that pulls out all the way, and then your bikes are easily removable with these Rocky Mount systems. These are pretty cool to work with. All right, I'm gonna talk about the plumbing and the electrical. Maddie's gonna put in some B-roll to make it more exciting. You don't fall asleep as I explain this. But the plumbing system is a 32-gallon freshwater tank with the five-gallon hot water heater with the SureFlow accumulator and water pump. Accumulator is key when you have a lot of water in a van, especially a shower, you're not losing pressure. Moving on to the electrical, it's pretty much a standard system to run everything in this van. They have 400 amp hours of lithium battery, all the Victron components, so the 3000 watt multi plus inverter charger, which allows them to have shore power. They have the Lynx distributor, all nicely fused. Over 30, 30 over 100 uh, charge controller. And then they also do have an Orion, the 30 amp DC to DC charger. So as you're driving this vehicle, those batteries are getting juiced up as well. And I think I mentioned before, 400 watts of solar on the roof. Plenty of power in this build. And one thing I should mention is the gray water tank. The only gray water tank that is undermounted in this van is the shower. It's a 20 gallon tank. And with a push of a button from the inside, it drains itself completely. We'll show you a clip of that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tour. It was just another build in the books for us and we're super happy with this. It's actually our first time working on an extended transit. It was fun to say the least. Really happy with how it turned out. I know I keep saying that. Let us know what your thoughts down below. If you have any questions, concerns that you think, oh, why'd you do it this way? We'll be happy to answer. And we'll see you in the next one. We're gonna keep building all of our information. Van City Conversions is down low. And as Finn says, if you like the video, leave a like. We'll see you guys on the next build. Bye!